writer at Good Housekeeping Magazine, but her work has appeared in HollywoodLife.com, Parents, HGTV, and J14 magazines. She identifies as Filipino-American and grew up with her Filipino immigrant parents and two older sisters in New Jersey. Shannon, would you like to say a few words before we begin? Yeah, hi everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Um, thank you, Aspire, for hosting this. This is one of my first, this is like my first talk, so I'm really excited to be here and to have it done with Aspire. Awesome, and so now we're gonna transition to some questions regarding Shannon's career, journey to finding her voice and a newfound passion for bringing her background to her workplace. So you're an editor at Good Housekeeping. Did you always know you wanted to be a writer? Yeah, you know, I always loved reading and writing um, ever since I was young. Um, in second grade, I would write poems about friendship. And in third grade, I would steal my dad's copy of Reader's Digest and read that. So I always loved reading and writing, but I never thought it could be a lucrative career um, because in many cases, it's not. It's a very competitive space, um, just like with any job in the creative industry. Um, so I actually originally worked towards a pre-science major my freshman year in college because, well, this is a general generalization, but Asians are encouraged to follow more practical careers and um, such as the medical business or law path. Um, but if I'm being really honest, I knew early on that the sciences weren't really, that my heart wasn't into the sciences. So I gave up one day and that actually led me to failing one of my classes. And um, that's something that I think a lot of people deal with and don't talk about, but that was a point when I knew I'd be better off excelling, um, doing something that I loved, which is writing. Wow, so what was that switch like, having to go from pre-science and switching to the opposite, like creative writing? Yeah, it was a really difficult time. Um, I, visited, I visited the Career Center a bunch, just to like revise my resume, talk to different chairs of various school departments, just to make sure writing was something that I really could do professionally. Yeah, and so how did you find opportunities and experiences and different internships in your new career path? Um, well, I think it's hard because there aren't a lot of other AAPI individuals in my career industry, which is the media. So I really didn't have anyone to look up to, nor did I have a guide a mentor to guide me. So um, the Career Center at school had internships, but they were all like news outlets and things I wasn't really interested in. Um, I was more into lifestyle editorial, which is what I'm doing now. So I just really took it upon myself to Google internships and apply to maybe a hundred jobs until I landed my first internship. Yeah, and what was the type of work you were doing when you first started out and how would you say it's transitioned since then? Well, luckily, I never had to fetch coffee as an intern, but I did have to do like smaller menial tasks like deliver mail to various editors every day or um, do content research or uh, make PowerPoints, package PR gifts for editors. Um, but I'm sorry if you hear noises, they're doing construction <laughs> in my apartment. But a little bit about my career path. Um, I started working at a beauty PR firm called Traxenberg & Co. And there I learned that I loved working in the media space, but not particularly PR. And that experience helped me get my next gig, which was an internship at HollywoodLife.com, an entertainment site. And there I acted as beauty intern and wrote pieces about celebrity beauty. Um, next, I ended up at HGTV Magazine, where I discovered my love for home styling and lifestyle content, and is honestly probably the reason why I'm obsessed with home decor today. And then I interned at Parents Magazine for a year, then I got my first full-time job at J14 Magazine, and worked there for like a year and a half, and now I'm at Good Housekeeping, and I've been here for about two years. Yeah, that's super great. Can you talk a little bit more about your job specifically at your current job, Good Housekeeping Magazine? Yeah, so at Good Housekeeping, I'm currently the product and reviews editor and actually just got promoted like two, uh, two weeks ago. So it's a very recent change and I'm excited about it. Um, but I write and edit best product roundup stories, uh, write best of Amazon roundup stories, 
do monthly and 40, quarterly performance reporting, work on gift guides and major holiday sales events like Amazon Prime Day or Black Friday. And that was what I was hired to do, but I also do a million other things such as um, I write about AAPI culture, whether it's about the hate crimes or pieces that really celebrate AAPI culture. And this can include stories like books written by Pacific Islander writers or what does AAPI mean or stories about Asian beauty standards. Um, I also leave the TikTok vertical at Good Housekeeping. So I conceptualize and recruit talent who are really our staffers and I direct them virtually um, to film their own TikToks and then I edit them. I also star in some of our Good Housekeeping YouTube videos where you should check it out, uh, where I test out products or I test TikTok hacks. And outside of work hours, but it's still kind of related to work, I also serve on the committee for our company's Asian affinity group. So my company is called Hearst and our affinity group is called Hearst AAPI. And I manage the social media page for them. And we basically just work to aim and elevate the voices of the AAPI community at work, kind of like what Aspire does in, in a different way. But um, yeah, that that's kind of what I do. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you have a crazy schedule. Uh, could you perhaps describe your typical work day? Yeah, you know, every day is different, but uh, I start off by looking at my calendar or making up my own calendar for the day. Um, what's consistent is that I'm always editing and writing stories for sure. Um, so I guess I start off with writing or editing a story and then at around 12 o'clock, I, I always work through lunch, but that I'll take that time to work on a social media post for Hearst AAPI. Then I get back to writing and editing, but sometimes I have to film a YouTube video like I did yesterday for our Good Housekeeping YouTube channel. I write up a, a TikTok shot list, which I did like the other day for another staffer. So like every day is different, but yeah, there's literally not enough time in the day for anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, so why do you think it was important to highlight finding your voice in this workshop? Um, yeah, I think there were a couple reasons I wanted to focus on that, um, especially in light of the recent hate crimes. I think it's important for people to speak about these issues. And unfortunately, from what I understand, many AAPI individuals are told to keep our heads down and work hard and blend in. And also anyone who knows me in real life knows that I'm an extremely in quiet and shy person. So like this right now isn't easy for me. Um, so I think that's why I wanted to use this opportunity to, to talk about speaking up and making space for yourself at the table and whatever it is you're passionate about. Yeah, and you mentioned that you're a shy person. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Well, I've always been really shy my whole life. <laughs> um, actually in pre-K, I got kicked out of pre-K because I wouldn't talk. And it was so bad that I was too afraid to ask to go to the bathroom. And at one point, my teacher asked my mom for video evidence of me talking at home because she really didn't believe that I talked at all. And so I had to leave that school and ended up having to interview at at age five with various principals of different schools and um, just to get into kindergarten because I had the reputation of being too quiet. And I even remember one instance in particular where I got rejected on the spot because uh, I wouldn't laugh at a principal's joke. And, you know, I was just really shy. I was like four or five years old and I just wish these principals had a little more patience. Um, but from then on, as I worked towards, I worked up my academic career, I got a little less shy each year. So, and now I'm here. So. Yeah, that's super great. Um, so what was your motivation to start speaking up and how did you manage to find your voice? Uh, yeah, I think my motivation was that I always knew I had things to say and I just didn't know how to express it. So I think college was a really big turning point for me because that was the opportunity for me to start fresh and new and um, just become a social butterfly if possible. So one way I managed to do that was by joining FLASH, our Filipino organization at school. Um, I didn't really have many Filipino friends growing up, so I actually went to a predominantly white, white Catholic school. 
So when I found out we had a Filipino group in college, I was so excited yeah. and joined, yeah. And I think you also mentioned to me earlier that you ran for treasurer your sophomore year in college. Um, what pushed you to do that as a shy person? And how did you feel about that responsibility of leading a club? Yeah, that was something that kind of fell into my hands. Um, my friends nominated, nominated me to run for treasurer and I thought, okay, why not? <laughs> and so I ran and I even made a video for my campaign with me singing, which I don't know what possessed me to, to do that because I am not a singer. But you know, leading such a big group alongside our e-board, we had about 80 people per meeting, I'd say. And it was exciting and frightening at the same time. I remember staying really close by the microphone the whole meeting because I was honestly afraid no one could hear like my small voice over the crowd. Yeah, I love that culture was one of the ways you were able to find your voice. Uh, what were some of the other ways that you were able to learn up or learn about speaking up in college? I think another way I was able to open up more was um, through interning. When I found out that writing was what I wanted to do professionally, um, I decided to look for internships because I knew the industry was risky and competitive. And through interning, I well, first I was forced to navigate New York City by myself, which was something I really never did as a suburban New Jersey girl. So I like asked strangers for directions to get to my office. And even like in the office, I was forced to speak up when I had a question or if I didn't understand something or had to fill in for an assistant who was sick for the day. So I think all of that together forced me to come out of my shell a little bit. Do you have any tips and advice for those looking to empower themselves and likewise find their own inner voice? Yeah, I think that's a really hard question, but I would say that you just gotta do things, do things that make you uncomfortable because that's honestly what leads to growth. And if you never try, you'll never know what you could be capable of. How have you implemented those techniques of using your voice at your workplace? Um, at work, I, I'm required to come up with ideas all the time and share my, my, share my thoughts and stories, be it through editing someone else's story or packaging my own. So, and also when I direct staffers for TikTok, I'm essentially telling them what to do. So I'm really forced to just speak up and share my opinions about things all the time. Could you tell us about an instance where you had an idea for something but was super scared to voice your opinion on it? Yeah, this happens all the time. Um, I think the hardest moment for me was when the hate crimes were happening and I was so over overwhelmed by what was going on that I could like barely focus on work. And at one point I opened up to my coworkers about how I felt and one of them encouraged me to tell someone higher up. So I did, and um, at this point, I didn't write one thing about API culture because that was not my job. My job was to write about products. But mid-convo with this higher up, I asked if we could write about the hate crimes and how I felt about it. And this was extremely nerve wracking because one, this was not, was not something I was hired to do. And two, there was this fear that this topic wasn't on brand for good housekeeping because we never covered something like, like that before. And I didn't know how our audience would take it, but most importantly, I didn't know how my coworkers and my team would take it. But I did, and then the answer was yes. And I'm really grateful that I had that opportunity. Yeah, that's awesome. And you said you also covered stories that aren't just about the hate crimes, but also about AAPI culture. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, every year, we are told to come up with big ideas, and this can mean big features that we want to write about. Um, for example, my coworker Selena launched a beautiful package for Hispanic Heritage Month last year. So that really inspired me to write about my own culture because I already knew that there was a disparity and a lack of represent representation in our content. And so this package that I came up with, this idea, it focuses on um, Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, 
which you can check out at Good Housekeeping. It's live now. And it's so cool to be able to use such a big platform to talk about these things. Yeah, and you also mentioned that you manage the social media for Hearst AAPI, the Asian Affinity Group, at the company that you work for. Um, could you tell us more about that as well? Yeah, so when I found out that we had an affinity group for Asians at Hearst, I got so excited because I'm one of two or three Asians on my team and there are 20 teams at our company. So it's there's really not a lot of representation. Um, and I guess one day the affinity group saw that I was a more active member. So they asked me if I could run the Instagram for the group because I was on the edit side of things. And now I'm on the committee committee for the Asian affinity group. And it's amazing that I get to be part of it because now I'm in meetings with higher ups. Like today I had a meeting with higher ups just about how we could cover more AAPI content across the network. And even just being a part of these meetings is such a big deal. It's just kind of insane to think about. That's so awesome. Um, and where else outside of work are you able to use your voice? Outside of work, um, I use YouTube a lot. I have a channel called We So Chic, which honestly, I think that helps me land the job where I'm in now because um, I, would, I used to make product reviews on that channel. But I also use that channel to talk about Asian culture and make living alone diaries and talk about things that interest me, whether it's apartment living or beauty or fashion. Yeah. And what has writing YouTube and social media taught you about using your voice? I think using YouTube and social media taught me that you can use your voice in any way or platform. It, it doesn't have to mean you're talking or speaking out loud. Um, you can express yourself via hobbies like filming and editing videos or through your outfits or whatever it is you're passionate about. Yeah, and what opportunities has YouTube and social media brought for you? Um, I've noticed that I'm starting to get a little bit more attention on YouTube, on Instagram, YouTube, and I think it's a mix of my YouTube content and also my coverage of AAPI culture for good housekeeping. And different brands are asking me to review their products or my YouTube. And I was asked, I was asked to speak for an Instagram live collaboration a couple uh, months ago. And now I have this opportunity, which is really incredible. So yeah. Yeah, it's all super amazing. Um, so for current college students, recent graduates, even high school students and aspiring creative writers, what do you wish you knew before you entered the field of writing? Uh, one thing I wish I knew before entering the field of writing is, I guess I already knew this, but just the emphasis that there really are not a lot of jobs in this space and it's very competitive and you really have to find a way to make yourself stand out um, because otherwise you're not going to get that job because 100 girls want the same job that you want. So um, yeah, that's important. And what would your advice be for those who are shy in the workplace and just in adulthood? I think my advice would be, I think that's a hard one, but I would say that um, it's okay to be quiet and shy. It's not a bad thing, but what's important is that you do speak up when there is something that you're passionate about and don't be afraid to speak up because what's important to you will be important sorry there's a motorcycle is <laughs> important to everyone else um, around you and who cares about you yeah and how can we bring more awareness to social injustices yeah i think that's a really big question but i think one easy way we can bring awareness to social injustices is by talking about continuing to talk about what's going on um, whether that's having these conversations with your parents, with your friends, just your inner inner circle, people at book club. I mean, I think that's what's going to going to spark action is if we just start talking. Yeah, and thank you so much for sharing your journey with us. It was super insightful and inspiring to hear how you found your inner voice. Um, and now we just have like a few fun rapid fire questions. So right. what did you eat for breakfast today? What did I eat for breakfast today? I had, I usually don't eat breakfast, but today I had blueberry pancakes with Nutella and honey. 
Uh, what color is your toothbrush? My toothbrush is purple and white. <laughs> if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? I would go to uh, Kyoto, Japan, because they have everything from like nature to city, and um, it's very sacred, but also modern at the same time. And are you a morning or a night person? I'm definitely a morning person. Um, people will text me at 9 p.m. and I'll be sleeping and then I respond at 6, p 6 a.m. <laughs> so morning person. Who was the last person that you hugged? Last person I hugged was probably my boyfriend Christian, <laughs> who was here. <laughs> um, what's the best thing that's happened to you this month? The best thing other than this event, um, I would say um, my package at Good Housekeeping talking about AAPI culture. Um, what's your favorite type of cake? My favorite type of cake is ice cream cake. It's a classic. <laughs> and lastly, what's your favorite holiday? My favorite holiday is Christmas because I love wrapping gifts and receiving gifts. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that pretty much wraps up our Q&A session. And thank you, Shannon, for taking the time to join us for our aspiring talks. So safe to say the three key takeaways that we have from today are that number one, your voice is important and that it's not bad to be quiet or shy. It's more important that you use your voice to speak up when you want to speak up and on the things that matter to you. Number two, uh, if you're passionate about something, don't feel like you have to be afraid to bring it up to your coworkers, book club, friend group, families, etc. It can bring about important conversations and change. And number three, never doubt your capabilities. Once you learn to do one thing, you, you'll realize you can do anything. Um, and if anyone else has any specific questions for Shannon, feel free to stick around. Um, we'll be sending out a recap email. Feel free to follow Shannon on Instagram at Shannon McGlente or on her YouTube at We So Chic. Socials will be in the chat. Um, also, be sure to check, out, check her out at Good Housekeeping, uh, where she writes and edits stories about the best products in every category sales, news, and even topics related to AAPI culture. You can also check her out at Hearst AAPI, where she runs a social media page. Um, and if you don't have any specific questions for Shannon, have a lovely evening, and we hope to see you at our next event on June 2nd at 7 p.m. with Ida Yu. Yeah, and feel free to ask any questions uh, using your mic or just through the chat. Hi, I have a question. Um, like, is what was is there like a huge difference between finding your voice um in college versus um like in the work world in the uh when you work? Because I I just graduated and I feel like a little shy in asking people like in the term of networking or like talking to people. Like, do you have any advice for that, or have you navigated around that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think it's still hard to network, um, even once you work professionally. And this might be a more creative way to network, um, especially if you're on the Shire side or, you know, this is more pandemic friendly. But one way that my friend networks is via Instagram and she just DMs people and asks if they could um, have a virtual coffee chat or anything like that. Um, or I think one easy way that I also like to network is just having informational or asking for informational interviews. And that's basically um, cold calling someone in the industry.